fair and balanced a read on all of this with the House Oversight ranking member, Jim Jordan, and we've also got the House Freedom Caucus Chairman, Mark Meadows. Gentlemen, welcome to both of you. Uh, uh, Congressman Jordan, to you Please first, uh, what do you make yeah. of the fact that both Jerry Nadler, now Adam Schiff, they're not letting go? This is my, uh, probably going to need hearings, investigating obstruction of justice issues. What do you think? Well, Neil, I'm not surprised. It was just two weeks ago that Nadler had uh, said, I'm going to subpoena this document, even though the Attorney General said he's going to give it to us in a matter of days. It was just two weeks ago that uh, Elijah Cummings says, I want 10 years of business records of the president. And it was just two, two weeks ago that Chairman Neal said, I want the president's tax return. So these guys aren't going to stop. We know that. Even though the American people understands that this is definitive, this says that there was no obstruction, no collusion, said the White House completely cooperated, said they exerted no executive privileges, and it, and it said 19 lawyers... 40 agents, 500 witnesses, 2,800 subpoenas over two years, millions and millions of dollars, and those were the conclusions. But we know the Democrats are going to keep going because that's all they're doing. That's all they want to do. You know, Congressman Meadows, the, the, the White House might have cooperated in the end, but not kicking and screaming along the way. They did answer that. Is the president written questions? But there were times when the president, if we're to believe the report out now, wanted to fire Mueller and wanted to do his best. To get rid of the guy, it didn't happen because uh, you know people around him wouldn't do it, including his top counsel. So, had that happened, and he had he succeeded at that, uh, would that have changed this entire story? Well, I mean, we don't know, Neil. I mean, it, it, the the fact of the matter is, is that he did con right. conclude the investigation. And and listen, you know the president. I know the president really well. If he wanted to fire Bob Mueller. He would have been fired. I mean, to suggest that there was one conversation and he instructed uh, Don McGahn to fire him and it didn't happen. Well, let me just say that he, he actually reports to the president of the United States. His office is right above the executive suite. It's not like they don't see each other on a regular basis. So, you know, we also don't have the, the, the privilege of a cross-examination here. This is one side. This is a prosecutor laying out the best evidence he has against the president. And he was still exonerated. And so, you know, it's a good day for America. It's a good day for the president because uh, what we, we now know, and it was interesting. Adam Schiff had this wonderful presser just a few minutes ago. That's a different Adam Schiff that's been on every Sunday show and every cable news network saying, I've got evidence. We're going to, to find uh, the, the president guilty. Now, all of a sudden, he's changing the narrative. Uh, you know, it's time for him to fess up and admit to the American people that he didn't have what he said he had. Congressman Jordan, do you think that the attorney general... Uh was being a, a bit too uh, in line with with the president, and that uh, Jerry now others had said he almost appeared to be acting as the president's lawyer, not the nation's top lawyer. Uh, no, what did you think I, of that? No, I think I think the attorney general's handled himself extremely well. I think he said that we're going to hold people accountable. Last week, when he talked about. Uh, the fact that there was spying that took place, and I think he presented the conclusions, and the conclusions speak for themselves. No new indictments, no sealed indictments, no obstruction, no collusion. Uh, I, I think he was. I think he's handled himself exactly the way the American people want their attorney general to operate. And I think what's most important now, lots of people Mark and I talk to, they want us to get to the bottom of this. This I call it the Comey cabal. These top people at the FBI who were so biased against the president that they were willing to take one party's opposition research document, this false, salacious and unverified, Jim Comey's words, dossier, and use that as the basis to go spy on the Trump campaign. That, that's what they did. And then when James Comey gets fired, he, he decides that he's going to push this even further. And he says, I'm going to leak memos that I wrote to the New York Times to create, manufacture this need for a special counsel. And at the time he was fired, because we deposed him, he told us at that time, after a year of this doing this, they still had no evidence of any type of collusion or obstruction, but he was willing to leak information to create the need for a special counsel. That's what needs to be looked at, and that's what I think Bill Barr is going to do. All right. So I, I guess we all ask what, what happens now. And Congressman Meadows, I mean, I, obviously, it, listening to the folks like Schiff and Nadler, hearings are going to ensue. They want to talk to Barr. They want to talk to Mueller. I know you guys have both uh, been wanting to get to the bottom of, of an, an investigation on this investigation, what started it. But when Americans are polled on this subject, close to half of them are saying, enough already. We're, pack it up. What do you I think? Agree. Yeah. 
That includes well, I your think investigation, enough, uh, looking into your well, investigation. Well, I, I, I think everybody says enough already, mainly because we've spent so much time on something that proved to be false. And so uh, I agree with the American people. Now, what most Americans want is to make sure that this doesn't ever happen again. Uh, and, and I wish we would see with Chairman Nadler and Chairman Schiff the same uh, tenaciousness uh, in terms of getting to the bottom of it. Because I can tell you, Jim and I were in, in the investigations as we looked at some of the improper uh, protocol that was, was breached, I believe, with the D uh, DOJ and FBI. And yet, many of them didn't even read the, the very documents, didn't show up for the interviews, and here they are trying to say that they're all about the rule of law and justice. We've but got to make sure. Up, right? They're not giving up, gentlemen. And, 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 well, Congress, and Jordan, the reason why I mentioned it, because in the, the, the Mueller report itself, quoting here, if we had a confidence that the president clearly did not commit obstruction, we would so state that. Now, obviously, they go on to say they did not. We were not able to say that no criminal conduct occurred. Now, obviously, he didn't take action, nor did anyone around him take action right. on he that. Chose not. But it was almost like they punted it to Congress to say, if whether you find that a high crime or a misdemeanor, that's on your watch. What do you think? No, but, but you're right. This special counsel, Bob Mueller, the guy the entire town, all of Washington said, is the greatest investigator in history, the greatest lawyer in history. This will be the definitive end-all thing, and he chose not to indict. That is the bottom line. And you're right. Most Americans want to move on, but most Americans also are tired of this double standard. This idea that there's one set of rules for us regular people, but a different set if your name is Comey, Clinton, Lerner, Lynch, McCabe, Strzok, Page, and they are tired of that, and they don't want this kind of thing to happen again, where a two-year investigation is built on a false premise, a false premise, and we know it was false. They don't want that to happen again, and that's why I'm so encouraged by what the inspector general is going to give us in six or eight weeks, and more importantly, what Bill Barr is going to do when he said he's going to look into this spying that took place where one party's opposition research document was used to go spy on the other party's campaign. Do you have any sense, and I'll, I'll maybe raise this with you, uh, Congressman Meadows, this idea that people are looking at this and saying, all right, um, and even Schiff seemed to indicate this, that there might be no, no laws broken here, but it, it's unsavory, doesn't look good. It, it, you know, uh, the, the president, you know, uh, going after his aides to go after people and all, no illegalities per se, but it doesn't look good. Now, obviously, to your point, gentlemen, I, I understand that that doesn't mean you peach the guy or you punish the guy, but, but that there, there are residual effects of this. Do you worry about that? Well, uh, of course, everybody worries about that. I worried about it when Hillary Clinton wiped a hard drive and got rid of 30,000 emails. And if you want to use Adam Schiff's standard, then Adam Schiff would be guilty when he met with Glenn Simpson of Fusion GPS that started this entire thing uh, in Colorado. He would have been guilty of, of coordinating with, with uh, someone who actually has put false uh, testimony before uh, the FBI. And so, so when we look at this, we need to understand that the rule of law is exactly that. Bob Mueller, special prosecutor who gets paid to prosecute people and indict people did not indict the president or and and could not go forward well, on prosecution a, other a reasonable this. He but, did but here's the thing people is, before this and some going off to jail now not all on collusion you're quite that, right that is but, correct but, but, do you but, but the president with a reasonable doubt residual congressman jordan on that point uh, more residual concerns to republicans than than, than this appears I think what I'm concerned about, Neil, is this memorandum of understanding that the four key chairmen in the House have, this idea that there's a coordinated effort that they actually wrote down in a document and said, you're going to go after the president this way, I'm going to go after him this way, here's how we're going to coordinate. That's what I'm concerned about. And when the American people want us to move on, they want us to move on. But we just found out this past week that the Democrat chairman, Chairman Cummings, Chairman Schiff, Chairman Waters, Chairman Nader have these memorandums of understanding on how they're going to continue to attack the president. Uh, on so many different fronts. And that is just wrong, and I think the Americans are tired of it. Do you think, Congressman Meadow, that uh, Bob Mueller did a good job in this report? Well, I think obviously he did a thorough job. You can't spend $30 million in two years and actually have uh, 40 FBI agents and, and 19 attorneys working on it. Uh, I will say that the way the report 
reads. It looks like Andrew Weissman did most of the report, and mm -hmm. uh, and and he was biased coming into this. And so, so when you when you look at the conclusions, I think it was wrong to say, well, we can't prove that he did. Uh, was not guilty. All we can say is we're not going to bring charges. That's really not up to him to do. He, he he has the burden of proof. The burden of proof is on the prosecutor, and yet we see that he didn't have enough proof to bring charges. Neil, how could it not be thorough? You had 19 lawyers spend two years, millions of dollars. Most of those lawyers were Democrats out to get the president. How could it not be thorough? And what were their conclusions? No collusion. All right. Um, the one other side note here is I think we've hopefully put to, to rest it. Who, who knows uh, that the, the president was duly elected, the, the, the president of the United States, uh, and Democrats have not argued that today. At least I, I could have missed it, gentlemen. But I, I, I am curious <laughs> as to there were a lot of conversations with Russian, Russian operatives, et cetera. I guess the understanding in this report, though, it, it was not collusion in that the, 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 the Trump folks did not respond in kind or make any side deals or the kind of stuff that would, would speak of collusion. I'm not a lawyer, so maybe you guys are and know better. Well, but I am wondering, though, whether that alone is a worry going forward and whether those kind of conversations, uh, illegal or not, um, you know, called into question uh, just how much and how, how desperate the Russians were to interfere in this election and at what you guys can do going forward to make sure they never get the opportunity well, again. Well, I, I, we're looking at this in hindsight, Neil. I mean, interestingly enough, the only people that knew the Russians were really involved during the 2016 election was the Obama administration. Yeah. It wasn't the president uh, of the United States today. It was the president back then. And but we look back and we say, well, with him. he was meeting with him. And then again, it, you know, hindsight yeah, is 2020, but he was meeting with him. And again, to be fair, the Mueller folks found no proof of collusion or setting up a deal or a quid right. pro quo from that. I understand that. But do you, Congressman Neil. Jordan, just hearing that, does that worry you? Because holding a meeting well, with Russian always, operatives, does, if that were to be no, done no, again always, in 2020, would you worry? Right. No, you're always worried about any foreign power trying to have some impact sure. on our elections. That's, that's, that's a given. Every American understands that. What I take away from this is multiple times, this, the Attorney General was clear about this, multiple times they dangled the forbidden fruit in front of people associated with the Trump campaign, and they didn't bite. That is, that, is, that's, that is reassuring. That is comfort. That is good news for this country. Good news. It shows the kind of, I think, it shows, it reflects well on the president of the United States. So multiple times they had opportunities to collude and they didn't take them up on it, which I think is critically important information. All right, gentlemen, I want to thank you both very much.